Hello and welcome to today's Scriptcase project video. My name is Jamie and I am your host. In today's video, we will be talking about variables, how to use them within Scriptcase, what they are, and of course, more. So what are variables? Well, variables play a very significant role, not only in Scriptcase, but also in PHP. Variables are what we call a named storage. So these are locations that we can place in computer memory that then can hold various types of data. They act essentially as containers holding our programmed information, which can be accessed and manipulated by another program, script, or yourself within your own code. Now, variables have some very specific characteristics. First of all, there is a name, an identifier. So each variable has a unique name, such as name, right here, as we have within our example, John Doe. That identifies this variable within the memory location or location within the memory. What we then have is the data type. Now, these variables can store different types of data, such as a string, which is a John Doe, a name, for instance, text. We have then also integer types, which is, are the numbers, floats, strings, or bowlings, and all of these can be stored within these variables. We then also have a value. Okay, now the value of the information stored within the variable, and that is exactly what we have here, the John Doe, the 30, and the true. So those are essentially the values. The type is what is contained within the variable name, age, or is underscore member. Now it is very important in programming because variables provide us with flexibility when we create our code and process various inputs and produce various outputs. It allows us also to reuse code as well as reuse data within different applications, different processes, different scripts, and so on. It also allows for control flow, allowing us to basically control the flow of our program, enabling conditional logic and loops based on these values. Now there are some tips and that would be to use descriptive and meaningful variable names, such as name or name underscore ID. Always keep track of your variable types to prevent any errors, as that can very easily happen. And also in some cases you may want to initialize those variables before using them to make sure that they are valid in the first place. And those are the typical variables that we have within PHP. Now, with Scriptcase, we have some further variables that we can use because Scriptcase has a great deal of functionality when we add our own variables, our own code, our own globals, and so on. And they do play also a very crucial role in the management of our data flow between all of our applications. With that, we can control user sessions and customize the behavior of our user input. So when a form is clicked, it will do this or that, and then maybe something else. And that is all for you to decide and program with the use of variables. Now within Scriptcase, we have further variables available. We have local variables, and those are typically declared within an event or a method, a library, we can use them also. And those would then be a temporary storage providing us with data that we would then condition within our functions and process accordingly. We have then an example also, and that is then displayed here with the dollar temp underscore result equals value one and value two. So here we are saying value one plus value two equals temp result. We just kind of flip that around a little bit. And yes, you may notice that I had just added the missing 
elements within the code here. First of all, the dollar sign, and at the bottom here, the square bracket. And at the bottom here, we have our global variables. And these are accessible via different applications within our project, meaning we set a global variable in one application and we can also access it within another. Essentially, this allows us for passing data between application as well as maintaining the state throughout our project. So all we do is define this in one application and then we can use it in another. And of course, I will be showing you how to use these variables as we continue on within this video. Now below that we have then here these session variables and session variables allow us to store a persistent set of data or access a persistent set of data that is available within our application or our project. So for instance, we could check here the session logged user equals then here our username. And then our username would then become this session. And there are a few ways of applying sessions within our applications, as well as using the session global and local variables. And we will start to go through those right now. So you will notice that we are already inside of our script case environment. Now here, I have already created a blank application as well as a control application. Now within the control application, I have also already added two fields. Now I do need one more, so I'm just gonna show you very quickly how to add those fields. And we do that by clicking here on new field, and we can then select the quantity of fields that we require. And in this case, I have already added the two that I need. So I just need one more, and I will click next. The field will be created for me and here I will just call this one here value and then click on create. So I will of course be using this control form in a few moments and showing you more of script case variables within the control application. But first, let's start off here within the blank application, one of my favorites. And of course, many of you probably already know that, but script case is pretty awesome. And it's very important that we manage these variables and that we know how then to also use them. So for instance, we have discussed a few of those already, and we could say a standard variable here. So this would be then say, for instance, my total price, and that would then equal say my price plus say my tax. Now, whatever that may be, okay? So we just very simply add, oh, let's not add a plus in there, let's times that. And like that, we would times our price by our tax. And the great thing is, in code, we can do pretty much whatever we want. And variables galore in script case. And we can then use these values throughout our applications. We can store any type of data within these variables that I have here now. And these are very typical PHP variables. There's nothing special about them. And we can always just define anything else. Say, for instance, a name. And well, as you know already, my name is Jamie. And well, with that, we have here a name displayed. And to display that name, I just need to go echo and then oh, echo my name. And if I go ahead and run that application, it will then display my name within the blank application. And it's really as simple as that. Now, I could change this, say for instance, to a global variable. Let's echo, for instance, my last name. Okay, like that. In fact, I will add an underscore in there just for the sake of it. And we close that off. And just like that, we will then echo here, for instance, a last name. But note, we have not defined it there within our code because it's a variable we have set as a global variable, meaning we can send and receive this from other applications and say, for instance, enter well, my last name in here, and off we go. There we have now my first name plus my last name all in one line, and maybe we would want to make further adjustments to this so that, of course, 
I have a space in there. And I can just do that again by adding another echo in here. And there I will add a space. In fact, let's add a space and a line and another space. And then I can run that again. And then this time, well, let's see what it comes out with now. Now we have Jamie space dash space oats. And there you go. That's my name. And well, it's really as simple as that to use PHP variables as well as global variables within Scriptcase. Now with these global variables that we have here, it is important to note that we can use these throughout our applications. So when we are passing data from one application to another, we would want to use here the global variable. And for that, I will go ahead and create, say, a new application. I'm just going to show you this very quickly within, say, a form application. And I'll create that here on my clients. And form clients number one. And then if we go ahead and run this application, you'll see that we have a very generic form right now with some client information, right? And with that, we can then come here to our application into events. And then we could then maybe use the global variables here within the events and then use them throughout this application or even request it from other applications. So if I come in here, for instance, we have the SQL and here I have a where clause. So here I could say, for instance, where ID clients and that will equal here our field. And of course, we actually want that to equal maybe a ID client, okay? And whatever that may be, we can add that then here. And if I go ahead then and run this application now with that global variable defined there, it will be requested here when we start the form. And then with that, I can define for, and that will then give me the client information which is ID client four. And just like that, I can open a single client form or application and obtain their relevant data instead of having all of them. And just like that, we can use global variables within our script case applications and well, become a lot more powerful, right? Because they do provide us with superpowers within these applications. And that is important to highlight. So now here, as we continue on within the application, now I may add a number there, but here, maybe I want to change it. So here my ID underscore client. Well, I've changed my mind. I don't care what the user has inserted. I want that to be number one and I want it to remain number one. Now the thing is we are applying this on load. So now if I go five and then run this, it will load ID five because now I'm running this at a later time after my SQL event has run. So what I need to do is copy this, remove it from on load maybe, and specify that here on application in it. And that will then on initiation of the application, specify the ID client one straight away. And here I can say five, but I'll come here to the form and I will always be viewing ID number one. So that is also very important to note that we can use these events and adjust, manipulate and process our data. And just like that, you know how to use global variables within the applications. Now these global variables, these can also be set as session variables. And to set a session variable, well, we do that by, of course, starting, first of all, our session. And we do that here with some brackets on the end and it is session underscore start. As much as we may want to start it first and then the session, it is actually session underscore start. And this will then start our session within our application. And it's really as simple as that. And now, we, of course, we can take maybe some different code that we have and, well, maybe display some information. So let's just go print underscore R. So it's just going to print everything. And with that, we can open and close our brackets there, close that up. And then we want to, well, 
display here our session data. And if I go ahead and run that now, let's see what that then displays for us. And well, look at that. So that is gonna display a 10 ton of content for us and pretty much everything we may want to know about our application. And that is very important when it comes to script case. For instance, you may see here, we got a note, an error occurred. There's also some variables here for charts, some language variables in here, and variables that we can also use throughout our applications and so forth. And well, that may be a little crazy to go through. So maybe we would want to maybe clean it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and say echo some more code out here and if I just echo out a line first of all because we like lines and then here I will add my session start because that's pretty much what's happening right now and then we want to oh, let's add a pre in here and I think we're good with that and then we have our session data here and then underneath that let's go echo again and here we just want to add or finish up our pre-statement that we had started and that will basically format our text for us. So if I go ahead and run again now, look at that, that's magic, right? And just like that, we have formatted the text that is displayed to us and we can read it a little easier. Now, it is important to note that there are a lot of lines of code here and a lot of global or session variables, should I say. And of course, note they are looking very much like global variables, right? So that is important to note also. And of course, you can also use these. Now you have here the NM session data. And here you have a lot of information that may be useful to you within your applications when you are developing. So that is always important to note and something worth checking out. Now, if I come back here, back into my application. Now, what I want to then do is maybe change this up a little bit and well, I'm going to add a session variable in here. So let me go if and then if and I'm going to add an else there as well because we want an else here too. And here I will echo. Let me get that corrected. And here we shall echo false. And then up here we shall echo here uh, true. And maybe you can guess what I'm doing here already. But right now, I want to now hear if it exists. So if is it, okay? So if my variable exists, I'm going to be looking for now. And that will be my underscore session variable. And that will be called here SC connect. Okay, just like that. And now if that variable is available, then we will echo true. And if it's not, we will say false. But now I really want to go one step further than that. So let's go and if our session variable here, and that again is SC connect, okay. And if that equals yes, then we shall echo true. And if it's a no or anything else, then it's false, okay. So if I go ahead and run that now, we'll have no SC session underscore connect, but at the same time we will. Why is that? Because I literally used it a few moments ago before recording this video. So the session is already existing. Now, I want to show you something because this is actually a really cool application that you can use to test your local environment. And of course, those session variables, those global variables that you have set within your applications and make sure they are good. And this is of course, Postman. And you can see here that I had run this just now, not so long ago. I've actually removed the key and everything from here, which is maybe a little mean of me, but yes, that is pretty much gone for now. But I will go ahead and add that in here again. So SC underscore connect and the value, well, is no. And if I go ahead and send that now, we have session true, session start array. Okay, now we need to make sure here that our variables and everything else is correct, that we have everything here in the correct manner. So if I go ahead and run this again, we have here then our path up here, and we want to make sure that is then also set here within our application here. So you set that and that we can then copy from our 
URL up here, which you're not seeing right now. So I'm just gonna bring that into view, look, and that I have then here. And I can copy then the URL from this and then place that here into my Postman and remove there the slash that is too much and say SC connect equals no, send that and that is still coming back as true, okay? So we have here our cookies also, the headers are displayed here within the application also. Now if I change this to yes, and if I click send again, we still have true. Okay, so back within our script case application, we can always reset our session variable. So if I come here session, and that can then equal whatever we set it at, and here, for instance, I can say, well, if it's no, and here I can say it is yes, and then it's gonna come back as false. And of course, I can adjust that within the code as I then choose to. And that is, of course, very important to note that we are able to manipulate our sessions here. For instance, I could add another session down at the bottom here, so let me add another one here. And this one, I'll say my company, and here I'll give it then the name of the company. And just like that, we have then the company name there, and that is then stored as a session variable within my application. And of course, I can echo that out again, simply by typing echo, and then here, maybe we want to set a pre in here so our text is formatted correctly with the print underscore R. Again, this is dumping everything pretty much. It's pretty much like a dump. And with that then, we can then indicate that we want to print out our session data again. And of course, don't forget to close up our pre-statement here, close up the line here. And that is of course very important that we close our lines all the time. Otherwise, of course, we will, will have an error within our code. Now, if I come back here to Postman again, and if I get then here saying yes, send that, we have then all of the data in here as well. So if I come back to pretty here, we will then find somewhere down the bottom here that we have then the company name SC Connect is here. Yes, see, there is the connect. And if I come down, we have here the data of our session data again. And all the way down the bottom, we have then here, this is my VAR and my company. So you can see there also this previous session values that I had set and I had not removed them, okay? So that is also very important to note because of course I have now, you know, I'm playing around with this before starting to record the video and then coming to record the video. Certain sessions are already defined within the applications and existing then throughout the remainder of its session time. So until I close up the server or cease all sessions, those sessions will remain. So that is very important to note. And of course, you will have to you know, take advantage of that as well as be aware of that when you code your own applications. Okay, so we have here then the session variables. We have also looked at the standard global variables and also now let's have a look at some field variables, shall we? So we have here our control form application. And if I go ahead and run that now, I've not added any code to this yet. It is just a straight form with three fields in here. And here, for instance, I want to maybe have a value in these two fields here and then output that to say field three. So for that, I'm going to out, well create an Ajax event and I will create that on field one on change. And I will want that also on field two so that whenever I adjust field one or field two, it will update the value here in my value box. Okay, so the quickest and easiest way for that to happen is I'm going to add in here a library, my lib, uh, and I'll call it vars. And let me open and close that. And I'm just gonna copy that as well, save. And I'm gonna paste that also in here and then just copy the name so that I have that here for programming, PHP methods, and I will create a new method and that will then call, be called my lib vars. So I'll click on create and just like that, I've created a method which I can use throughout 
this application. Now, if I want to use this same method or this same code throughout my applications, all of them, my project, then I would maybe want to use the internal libraries or the external libraries. But otherwise, now within methods will allow you to have nice and clean code. So here I would say my value, well, my value will equal my field one. And that, well, we want to times that by here my field two. And don't forget to close that up. And just like that, we have used a field variable within our application. Well, three of them, in fact. We have here the value field. We have there also the field one and the field two here. Okay, and then what we're doing is we're taking field one and we're going to times it with field two and output that here to our value field. Now, what I also want to do then here is come here to the beginning and save that. So if I save that and then here on events and then when I load my application, well, I want my value to actually output something to display something. So I'm going to say zero as the value. Then I'm going to go ahead and run my application and you'll see within my value field, I now have zero. And if I go five times five and already I have an error because it's expecting a string here within this text field and it's not really a text field. So let's change that here to an integer. I'll save that field two. I'll change that also to an integer and I'll save that. And then here for the value, well, that will also be an integer field. So I will save that also. And just like that, I can change the data types on the fields. And there are many of them there. So do check those out. Now, if I go ahead and run the application again, and I'll go five unsupported operand. And of course, we're getting an error still because the field is still being recognized as a string type. And again, we need to apply some PHP magic here and define these fields as integer fields. So I will add here some basic brackets in front of that and then add an int value there. So it's pretty much as an integer field. It's recognized as an integer field. Now, if I go ahead and run again, I go now five plus five, we now have 25. And just like that, we have made a slight adjustment here to our fields, as well as using our field values or variables within a form or control application. And we are then able to manipulate them. Now, it's important to note, of course, if that was a decimal field. So if I want to maybe use, you know, currency values or something there, then this would need to be a float and not an integer value. Otherwise, an integer is a straight number and float. Well, that allows for decimal values. And then I could, of course, go run again and then add decimal values in here. Again, adjusting the control type or data type of my field here within the application because right now it's set as an integer. Maybe then I would want to add decimal in there. Otherwise, the form itself may present an error. And while we're here looking at this control form, I'm just showing this off to you. Let me just go ahead and save this one field. It is always important within these control applications to set your values. So for instance, we have here a minimum and a maximum value. And I have set this now as a decimal. So maybe now here I would want 0, 0.00 and then here maybe 99.99.99. 99. And that would then allow me for a nice decimal range for this application to work without it giving me any errors later on down the line. We may want to add the decimal precision there, add that there also. And of course here for the value, now we have changed the initial fields to decimal. Well then this would then now also become a decimal field. So we would maybe then want to adjust that and make sure that we have then our application set. And I will highlight one further field here, and that is here the field size in database. So you may want to adjust this for the control form also, all depending on what is required. Now, in general, 
I would add 50 there now so that this does not give us any errors if we would want to maybe insert the data into a database or anything else. So now for instance, I can come here and go 9.99 and that is going to be plus 7.99 and then we have here 79 as our flat value. Now this is still set as a decimal. So let me go ahead and run that application again and I believe I did not add the decimal precision there. We go to run and now that will then also display the decimal values. So now I could go 9.99 and then here 7.54 and then we have our full value just like that. And it's very easy to use variables within Scriptcase and it is also very important to highlight the power of those global and session variables as you can use them then throughout your applications, throughout your project and of course handle those session values or information that you need to process throughout. For more content on Scriptcase, you can always visit Scriptcase by Jamie over on YouTube and there we have a lot of more content available for you. Thank you very much for watching and always be sure to use Scriptcase for your development projects.